What I intend on showing today is how to get into the dash of a 2017 Silverado using simple normal tools that we have around the garage to pull off the bezel, to pull out the front mount for the radio, to unhook the controls for the uh, air conditioning and stuff, and then to be able to remove the factory built-in stereo and install a replacement. Before doing any work inside the dash, it's always best to unhook the battery. So you unhook the negative, uh, set it to the side so it doesn't touch anything. That way there is no chance of shorting out any of the equipment in the dash. Bezel removal is fairly easy. This portion around the outside here, internal to the vents, so this part here, this is the bezel that comes off. It comes down around here. There's this thin part which you have to be careful of because this is the probably the part that most easily can break. What we'll do though is we'll start on the side here. We we'll use a normal screwdriver, a nice clean cloth. That way we protect the uh, trim and everything so we don't do any scratching. There are tools available that you can buy, plastic tools that work quite well also. Hooking the screwdriver inside the cloth, we can pry it down inside and slowly pull out from this. You'll hear the clips give way. There'll be several clips along. There's a couple in this side portion. There'll be a few across the top, two here and there's some down here on the bottom also. Very lightly move around the sides, pulling on it. You'll be able to get all the clips to pop out. Like I said, down here in the bottom, you want to be the most gentle because this is where the, the, it is the lightest or least amount of plastic and the easiest to break. So now what we'll do is we'll just set that up out of the way. We don't need it now. The next thing we'll need is to pull out these screws. These bolts require seven millimeter socket. What I've found quite often, they are simply hand tightened. They're not in there super well. Now there are four of them. There's one on each corner. And you got the upper corner. So remove all four of these, then the whole face front of this will be able to pull out. There will be clips holding it on the sides, on both sides, but you'll simply be able to pull it forward and then we'll unhook the cables behind it. All the screws have been removed. Now what we can do is simply get a little pull on both sides of the face. It will come off. We only have a few cables we'll unhook. We'll unhook these two. There's one on the bottom here and one clear down at the bottom for the vent control and stuff. So now if you look at the backs of them, there is a little pin right there that you simply push in and pull the plug. They'll all have something similar. We've got the third one for the stereo portion. Squeeze, pull, and then the one for the air conditioning and the vents. Now, that they're all loose, so that way you don't have the pressure or the weight of the front pulling on those cables the entire time we're doing work in here. We can just set this out aside, put it on a nice clean cloth or something so that the face doesn't get scratched and keep it secure. Now I've got the face removed, set to the side. Here are the, all the cables for the stereo side. That's the one that was hooked up to the vent and air conditioning and stuff. Now, all we'll do is we'll pull the plugs on all the different connectors for the stereo unit itself. Once again, there's little clips that you just push in and you pull. They are color-coded fairly well, so you shouldn't be able to get them too mixed up. This one obviously is the antenna, and then there's the satellite antenna. all the radio portion, all the 
speakers. And then really nice thing that GM has done is you grab it and you just get a slight tug. It's not very much work or effort to pull the stereo unit itself out. It does have a little jack plug on the back that will hook in once it's plugged all the way in. So once it's out, we can set it to the side and we'll get our replacement unit and put it back in. Now I'm simply going to slide the replacement unit in, push it nice and slow and carefully. You'll kind of feel it set itself in place. There are areas where it'll be nice and smooth. So now we'll just take all these cables, we've unhooked them, just plug them back in. Like I said, they're mostly color coded, color coded, so it's pretty easy to put them back where they belong. I'm gonna start with the satellite one. Let's find the antenna. We'll plug him in. Luckily, they do only go one direction, so it's easy enough to figure out. We'll take the black one, the USB. Since they have USB ports on them, they do fit in fairly easily. And then the blue one. They will all lock in place. They should be in there. The cables should be back pretty much where they were. They're not going to be in the way of anything. If you did not have satellite before, a lot of the equipment will come with a external satellite with antenna which then is magnet and can hook to the top of your vehicle. I've got all the cables here. Basically just run it pulled out the glove boxes, which are secured with a screw here and a screw here. Then what happens underneath, down on the bottom, there'll be a screw or two screws. You unhook those, this entire lower portion will come out. You don't have to remove the upper portion. It will be able to come out though at that point. But then just run the cable on through Pull open the fuse box compartment over here, lift it open, and then you can run your antenna around through and up over the roof, and then put it all back inside the uh, molding here and the, the gasket so that way it doesn't leak or anything, and then the antenna cable is protected. Now that the stereo unit itself is back in place, what we're gonna do is we'll take the face, which has all the controls for heat, air conditioning, everything, the stereo. We will plug it back in place. Rest it here on the edge, and then I'll put all these cables back in. Now that the cables are all hooked back in, these two, there's a lower one that's part of the stereo, and then there's this one, which is for the vent control, AC, air, heat. Um, this is a Silverado 2500 HD work truck 2017 so this is all the more controls we have or cables Luckily like I said the cables usually are color-coded or at least sized that you cannot necessarily put them back in the wrong spot When you're taking it apart if you're worried that you might you could mark them with like a marker on the base And then on the cable so that way you've got and color-coded them that way so you can put them back together but all we have to do now is hook in this clip on this side and the clip on the other side back into the dash. You push twice and she's back in place. Now that she's just sitting there, what I'll do is I'll rehook up the battery. We'll turn on the truck and we'll make sure that we have a stereo that's functioning. I've now reattached the battery. We'll check and see we have a our actual radio working. We got a volume. No real stations to play at the moment. There we go. We've got some music. Since this is a stereo that has a Sirius XM, we'll check to see that we have radio. The antenna is working. We are getting their preview channel. 
Now all we have to do is simply transfer our service to this new radio, put everything back in place. I've got, once again, the one, two, three, and four screws that we'll put in. Please use that seven millimeter socket. We're putting these in, we want to make sure they're as lined up and centered as possible so that way the bezel, when we put it back in, will fit perfectly. Now when we remove these screws, like I said, they were pretty much hand tightened. I'm using an extension with the seven millimeter socket and I am simply going to hand tighten them again. Turn as hard as I can. Now, not as hard as I can, but at least get them in there nice and snug. That is all the further they were in before and that's all we're gonna worry about now. So now, the next step will be put the bezel back in place. The bezel is larger on top, smaller on the bottom. You see where the vent cutouts are? So what we will simply do is start getting it lined up. I want to make sure that it is fitting around the uh, face plate and everything for the stereo. Go around the outside. Make sure that it's pushed in everywhere. And you'll hear the clips. They'll snap in place, but you got to make sure that it's lining up everywhere too. As you can see on this side, I've got it just a little bit too low over here, which means that I'm going to do a little bit of adjustment. And we're done. We have put everything back in place. Turn on the ignition. We see our Chevy Link. And we have Sirius XM working on the stereo. So now, simply set up your XM service. And then you'll have everything going. And check the other stations. These are the defaults. I don't have anything programmed yet. So we can jump back and forth between AM, FM, and Sirius XM.